Today's trip down the turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Sports, I am Dave Weishattle, and as always, I am joined by my producer and co-host, Doug Weishattle. Doug, we have a new champion for the NHL and a new champion for the NBA, back-to-back nights. You know, it was it was actually fun the last couple of nights. So we were uh, down in Atlantic City at the Harris uh, Casino Resort down there for a conference, East Coast Gaming Con- Congress, and uh, great time for the con- Congress, but also... Yeah, I've I've never had back to back finals game uh, f- uh, finals finishing games championship I, I, games. Well, I I don't think anyone has. I think this is the first time in history because I I can't remember it. No, and I I guess this is also the first time you're seeing an international champion in in the NBA. Yes, congratulations to Toronto, the Toronto Raptors, champions of the NBA. <laughs> and what and what is that more surprising than uh, the NHL champions? I don't know because St. Louis was in last place in St. January. St. Louis was had a terrible record in January, and uh, boy, uh, B- Coach Baruby really uh, turned it around. I can't believe they made that turnaround. I, I don't. <laughs> you you know, you've you've heard last uh, worst of first, but they actually lived it throughout that the the season here, and they they actually play a great brand of hockey. They do. It's it's. I guess it's old school. It's, I know it's the smack, Bruins fans don't want to hear it's that. Smack you in the face kind of hockey. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, no, they roughed up the Bruins, and uh, you know, to their credit, the Bruins hung in there and uh, until the last game, which was uh, four to one, and they really didn't show up. But, no, uh, no, hey, it was an exciting series. Uh, anytime it, it goes to seven games, it's exciting. It, it was actually really interesting the fact that all the way through this the entire series, you had Tuka Rask being one of the best goalies. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened that last game. I it just well, he needed a little help from the uh, <laughs> defense of the Bruins, and he did just didn't get it. No, so, uh, no, he didn't. Uh, and uh, so now we have the St. Louis Blues as the reigning uh, Stanley Cup champions. Yep, worst and the first Toronto Raptors uh, NBA champions, Is beating she- the Golden State Warriors, who again lost two main players. And I guess they got to figure oh, yeah, out what's, what's going on I, there. I, I cannot believe what happened. First Durant, well, I, I don't even know if he should have been playing, number one. Number two, I, I mean, I, unbelievable. Clay, oh, God, we saw that happen. And yeah, it, it didn't like, look oh, good. Oh, boy. I mean, it didn't look bad regular speed, but it's one of those injuries where you it you see it in slow motion and you just saw the knee buckle. Yeah, yeah. And we, we were sitting in the Harris Sportsbook. Yeah, and everyone just ooh. Yeah, no. It, opposite that, of the Toronto just, fans that did the KD reaction, bad. but yeah. you know, it it just didn't look good at all. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about the sports book and everything, and also the East Coast Gaming Congress that we were attending the last couple of days. We'll talk about that in the second half of the show. Yeah, it was a busy week, so let's take a trip down the turnpike. And today's trip down the turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. 
Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Exit 1. Okay, we had another busy week in sports betting. Yes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm impressed at how this thing is not slowing down. <laughs> it is not. And and like states that I didn't think would be involved are really involved now. Well, you know, let's let's start with the one-year anniversary of U.S. sports betting. Yes, of course. Uh, again, we were down in Lang City, East Coast Gaming Congress. That was one of the main themes throughout the Congress, the one-year anniversary. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and we, we were down in Atlantic City when Atlantic City first started offering sports betting. And uh, I, <laughs> We went to I the Borgata Sportsbook Open that day of the conference. So. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I don't know if these things are going to be worth money, but I took all the betting sheets, not all, I, one of every betting sheet that they had that first day, and I kept all the tickets that I, the bets I made. And, I still have my ticket you know. from the FanDuel Sportsbook when that opened. Yeah, I so, know. Uh, uh, I'm hanging on to everything, too, but... According to the AP, they released a uh, article, and uh, everyone's talking about this. Uh, at least nine billion dollars has been wagered since the U.S. Supreme Court ruling a year ago, and that's that's an incredible number. It's staggering. It's amazing, and and it's going to be higher next year. I bet it, it's probably going to be higher in six months. What are <laughs> yeah, you talking probably. about? Probably. Because uh, football starting up again, sure, sure. and, uh, and a know, whole lot, a lot new states are uh, yeah. getting involved. Surprising states too, I think, in some yeah. areas. But uh, one big surprise was, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, again, it's uh, you know we're seeing New Jersey slowly catch up to Vegas too, or Nevada, I should say. Yeah, uh, and it's it's kind of interesting. The article sums up every state's revenue, excluding the month of May, because it was all these numbers were compiled before the May numbers were released. Sure. So. Uh, Nine million is probably closer to ten million now, probably yeah. because uh, we actually going into well after these two finals. Yeah, let me tell you something. Seven game finals is just you know it must do wonders for sports books. Oh yeah, it does. It does. But um, what I was going to refer to was New Jersey released their numbers. Okay, another huge uh, month for them. Total handle was three hundred eighteen point nine million dollars. Wagering revenue was fifteen point five million dollars. Mm-hmm. The hold was five point nine percent, give or take six percent, or whatever you want. To, however you want to round it up, the total handle coming in online was nearly eighty three percent again. Wow. That that is a staggering number, yeah. and the amount of different sites you have now launching in in New Jersey in terms of online things, you have FanDuel, DraftKings, PointsBet. You already had PlayMGM Sports, eight 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 Sports, um, Play Sugar House. You know, all those things. Now you have Borgata Sports launching, mm-hmm. and uh, that, that'll be interesting to see what kind of impact it makes on the market. I got to tell you, I can't wait to see the June numbers. First, like I said, you have two, uh, you know, you had basketball, uh, the finals, you had the NHL finals, and you know what everyone's watching right now is soccer, World Cup soccer. I'm Every, starting to see everyone's a lot of, loving that. I'm starting to see a lot of golf now, too. Golf? Yeah, a lot of golf. Which so. is nice to see. And I mentioned a sugar house just a little while ago. Um, they're changing their name. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. Uh... The brick and mortar is going to be the Rivers Casino Philly, or okay. F- Rivers Casino Philadelphia. They're using the full thing. Okay, I'm sure they're going to call it Rivers F- Rivers Philly or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they're also changing the name of their sports betting app. According to uh, Rustry Gaming, the brand for the online sports betting, actually their entire sports betting brand, is going to be Bet Rivers. Bet Rivers. Okay. Yep. So mm-hmm. you're going to start seeing the Sugar House, the Play Sugar House, which has been, already been running in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. They just launched Play Sugar House Pennsylvania. So get, they're get gonna, rid of those. Yeah, they're, they're going to switch. <laughs> they're rebranding to the BetRivers.com. Okay. So you're going to see some new branding coming along. They're saying, I think they uh, they were hinting toward uh, mid-July sort of thing. So if I go to Philadelphia, I'm going to see a new uh, name on the building, huh? Not yet. They're still doing it. Okay, they're still doing it. I so, mean, so July, if I go over in Philadelphia, you know, I'll, I'll see a new name on the building. Well, well think about it. when you when you're doing dealing with trying to do a unified brand. Mm-hmm. Look at the way the Rivers Casino in Pittsburgh looks versus the way the Sugar House Casino in Philadelphia looks. They look totally different. Sure, you uh, got to redesign the brand. You got to recolor it. Other than them being both on Rivers. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they don't. Yeah. You Sugar wouldn't House think they were part the of the same family. Yeah. Sugar House is on the Delaware for those who don't know. 
Yeah, and uh, again, so the big thing is, and, and and I agree with what Rush Street was doing, because the Sugar House brand didn't really fit with the Rivers brand, and the Rivers brand was their main brand. Yeah, yeah. Because they also have one in uh, Illinois, the uh, Des Moines. Okay. So, uh, you know, you're, you're going to start seeing the switch over probably pretty soon. And you know what? It, it probably is one of the smartest branding moves because with all these different brands coming out online as well as brick and mortar, you got to do something to unify and, and not create even more confusion. Because I guarantee you, people who went to Sugar House didn't know the sister was Rivers Casino Pittsburgh. Yeah, probably, yeah. I, I can't wait to see. I, I mean, I have the Sugar House... Uh, sports book on my phone. I have that app. I'm I'm curious to see what's going to happen. I'm I going to get notification that there's going to be a huge, uh, I mean, uh, update or something like that. I want I want I have to keep an I, eye I'm out a, for I, that. I'm assuming you're just going to when it, as soon as you click on it, when they're ready to flip it over, it's going to it's do just going to automatically it's flip. Going to do an update. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, unless they can't get their app into the Apple Store in time. Well, I don't have <laughs> Apple, so thank God. I don't know. I think, boy. Apple is making things tough for Th- this everyone. This actually might be in their favor in terms of the online stuff because if they're doing a whole new app for Bet Rivers, sure, they can actually yeah. build it to the Apple Store specifications. Well, that yeah. might be one way to avoid all that problem. It might be good timing. Exactly. Uh, new York inching closer, little by little, to uh, sports betting. They, I, they, I would, th- I would think by football season. You can probably bet. New They're York. hoping to have sports betting in time for the for the football yeah, season. Yeah, I would think by yeah. August. Or, or, or why do it if it's not for football? I mean, football is the betting sport. I guess. That's well, what well, they says. just they just did a, a, another committee session to clean up some of the language. And the important things to come out of that is number one, they're going to be trying to do brick and mortar up in the northern part, northwestern part of the state. Okay. By football season. All right. Uh, they also cleaned up the language in terms of the stadiums because right. there was some some confusion as to what stadiums could do it, what stadiums couldn't, because the way the language was written before, uh, the Bills Stadium and also the Mets Stadium, City Field and uh, Orchard Park, the Bills okay. football stadium, right. they were excluded. Interesting. So they rearranged it, redid the language. So now basically every stadium is included yeah, in all this. Yeah. Every pro stadium. Well, that was the big thing when it, when it first came out, when everyone was talking about it. So, oh, you can bet in Yankee Stadium. Yep. And I, that was the example they used. Now so you can. Uh, so, so I guess they're cleaning up that language. And, and uh, unfortunately, mobile betting is probably not going to happen this year. Which is crazy. I, I You know, New Jersey borders them, so they can see how good it is in New Jersey. I don't know what's their problem. Well, I think New Jersey now can breathe a sigh of relief, a sigh of relief because now the New York betters that was that were coming over the river are still going to keep coming over the river. Yeah. It's yeah. not convenient to go out to western uh New York. I took a look at some of the distances from New York City. Okay. Rivers Casino Schenectady. Here's Rivers again. Yeah. 163 miles from New York City. All right. Tioga Downs, 210 miles. The Lago, Del Lago Resort is 270 miles. And the Resorts World Casino Monticello is 95 miles. So you know they're going over the river to Jersey. Oh, yeah. Well, well it makes no sense right now. FanDuel is 12 miles away from Times Square. Exactly. We were at FanDuel. I mean, you, you feel like you're already in New York because you see the city, and it's really close up. Plus, there's a stadium right there where two New York football teams yep. play. So why wouldn't you go to FanDuel? And, uh, you know, last- and why are there? Download the app. Yeah, it, it, again, mobile is king. Yeah. And Jersey has, has shown it. And actually, here's another reason why mobile is, is New Jersey's mobile uh, market is showing at the effect of the mobile betting systems. West Virginia is still having problems. Wow. Their, right. rev, their revenue is suffering a bit because not, not only did some of the sports books close because of that Delaware North, Miami uh, situation. There is an issue with a third party. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're still paying out bets that were made. All right. Before they shut down. Wow. Boy. So uh, they, they're continuing to do that. The DraftKings app is on hold right now because of the Wire Act uh, situation. They're, they're still reviewing the new <laughs> decision that came out of New Hampshire. And, uh, you know, the overall handle revenue is it's, it's, it's kind of stagnant right now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but they're being hurt by the lack of mobile betting. It's down, and I think it's... Uh, you know, it's it's a good indication that if you have a mobile presence, the brick and mortar ones, any kind of any kind of down downtime, 
isn't going to hurt you too much. Mm-hmm. So we'll see exactly when DraftKings, uh, you know, gets its permission to launch. And I mentioned New Hampshire with the Wire Act. This one is surprising. This came out of nowhere. I got this was when I alluded to something surprising with regard to sports betting in states. This is the one I'm talking about. Well, they've been talking about New Hampshire for a while. They were they were pushing really hard to do this because all never of a thought sudden, they'd get it though. All Just of a sudden, Massachusetts right. tried to do it, and that's put on hold right now. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen. If it's if it's going to happen at all, Connecticut uh, is is on course for some of this stuff, but. They're not moving as quickly as New Hampshire did. And uh, Rhode Island is now having all these other issues in terms of what numbers and expectations and all that other stuff that they use to to actually push this through. Well, I think the point is that now New Hampshire and Rhode Island are going to have sports betting. And where does that leave the relatively new Massachusetts casinos? I mean, you know, they're they're going to be losing customers. Well, we'll see exactly what the, the RFP process is because right now under the New Hampshire law, it's run by the New Hampshire Lottery, like most of the states yeah. do. They run through the lottery. Uh, the lottery is going to be selecting retail and mobile agents through an RFP process. Let's see exactly who actually applies. It'll be interesting. Uh, they're going to have up to 10 retail and up to five mobile wagering platforms. Hmm. But mobile is not expected until 2020. Hmm. Okay. So uh, we'll see exactly what happens there, but congratulations, New Hampshire. You, you basically <laughs> just surprised the entire country by pushing a uh, bill through that I honestly didn't think was going to happen. Now you can go uh, have some great time skiing in New Hampshire in the wintertime and play some bets. So good for them. Exit two. As busy as sports betting was, we had an equally busy week with esports. And I, I, I found a couple of stories that are demonstrating how mainstream esports are becoming in terms of an industry. Yeah. We just had the first $100 million deal between two esports businesses. I got to tell you, the money is going up and up when it comes to esports. Well, it, you know, it also depends on who's involved in, in the front offices sure. of these companies. Because in, uh, what happened was Immortals Gaming Club, which is. Uh, are owned by the family of Michael Milken. Okay. Junk Bond King. Yep. Yep. So uh, there's a lot of money there, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, they acquired Infinite Esports, and Infinite Esports, two of the owners are the owners of the Texas Rangers. Wow. Boy. So this was a high power deal here on both sides. They, they, uh, they merged into one big company, uh, Infinite Immortals Gaming Club now has the Los Angeles-based Immortals, which is an Overwatch League team, mm-hmm. and they've merged with Infinite Esports, which is the parent company of Optic Gaming, okay, which is a League of Legends game, a League of Le- Legends series team. So right now you have probably one of the few companies in Immortals that is actually going to be able to compete in four different sports. Four different categories of esports. I wonder if you know what they're doing is going to be the business model for esports moving forward. You know, it just seems like it's a smart way to do it. I guess everyone's looking at it to see it, see if it's profitable, and then see if it uh, works well in the esports world. You, you know, it's one of those things. It, again, it's unusual to see a company in the esports being able to participate in all four across the board of four major ones. You know, you have League of Legends, you have the Overwatch; they're the two big ones. Then, you, you know, this one is also going to be, they're going to have teams that can do Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which is an up-and-comer. And I've been noticing that's been getting a lot more press time. Mm-hmm. A lot more people are starting to play that one. It's becoming more popular among the gamers. And now you have the Call of Duty League, which is a brand new league being formed. And we'll see exactly where they're going. They're, they're getting franchises all set for that. So they're actually setting it up like a pro league with different cities. Wow. Having okay. teams. So, you know, it's... It it was it's an interesting piece and it's showing it's showing the movement of esports from, I, and I know esports people are going to say this I'm saying this wrong but they're moving from the fringe to a mainstream business model, and sure, it's nice I mean, to see this. I mean I think either last week or the week before we had a, you know Walmart is selling their jerseys so you know it's you know, it's getting to be. Um, you know, it's not like you said. It's not fringe anymore. It's, no. I think it's a money-making venture because it's got some important people involved in it. And 
the second big thing I, I came across was the Super League Gaming League. Super League Gaming. I'm, I'm saying it wrong again already. <laughs> but Super, Super League Gaming. This is an esports league that's geared toward amateur esports players. Okay. They just have. So their, they're not paid at all or anything like that, right? That's a question mark. Okay. All right. Because they, they, they went public. Oh. They right. had an IPO back in February. And uh, right now they're trading at six dollars and eighty three cents you know, for all our stock people out there who want to invest. Oh, okay. So they they like run tournaments and things like that. Oh, so so they they provide the area to do your right. your stuff, the tournaments and you know what like they events. what what they did was what was very interesting. They acquired a streaming media company, which is smart. Yeah. So they're almost going to be self contained not only for their own tournaments and events, but also online too. They bought frame rate for two point five million in cash. Wow! So it's the first acquisition. There's going to be more coming. Um, frame rate has, which launched just last year, has more than twenty five million video views in one year. So this is actually a smart, another smart move by another smart business group. Yeah, yeah. And I, I can't wait to see exactly if this move is going to be mirrored because. At some point, somebody's going to probably try and make a move for Twitch. I got to tell you, I'm seeing a lot more channels in the, um, you know, like the Roku or the, uh, what's the uh, Amazon well, Fire and as, stuff as, and things like the, that. I, as, I think there's more and more regarding esports are coming up. I, I think as the creation of the smart TV apps becomes more and more accessible to people, yeah, you're going to start seeing them create their own channels. But again, when you have companies that can go out and buy a streaming company like Framerate or or Twitch or uh, what's the other one, Caffeine? You know, I, I've never watched Caffeine in my life. I don't even. There, what there, is it? Like you just go on your uh, Caffeine dot com. Caffeine dot com. Okay, and I can uh, yep. watch videos. Okay. Yep. And uh, you know, it's 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 going to be interesting. It's it's an interesting little uh, model here. I think if you take what Immortals did match it with what Super League Gaming did, you might see a combination model coming down the road, which would be great for business. Hmm. And last but not least this past week, ESPN got into the act here. Well, they should. I mean, that's, um, you know. I, I'm, I'm, having, I'm having trouble excluding ESPN from the esports exit every week. I got to tell you, ESPN has so many different channels under the ESPN brand. I mean, I, I guess it's... ESPNU and ESPN3. Well, it. It's ABC Disney. So well, yeah, I guess, you know. Anything to do with kids, you know, they're going to try and latch on to. So uh, ESPN launched an EXP eSports series that's going to be bringing competitive eSports events to their live events. Hmm. You know, like the first one they're going to be doing is a Apex, La Apex Legends exhibition centered around the ESPYs. You okay. know that award show? Sure, sure, sure. I so mean, they're going to be doing... There's never just an award show. There's always events around it. So yeah. So I guess this is a good way to do it. So they're going to be doing that, and uh, they're going to be... Uh, well, there'll be an SB for an eSports category. At some point, they're going category. to be. has to be. Yeah. But what they're going to be doing is they're going to have an Apex Legends tournament around the ESPYs, and they're going to be played on live TV. Hmm. And you're going to be able to watch it on the ESPN channel, all that stuff. But one, what's important about this series is not only are they going to be doing the, the typical games, you know, collegiate, pro, and pro-am type formats, they're also going to be doing tape-delayed highlight show for all these things. Yeah, okay. You're going to be able to see them on ESPN on all, and also all the other ABC channels that are out there. I hope I can see it on ESPN and not their paid one. What, what is that, ESPN3? ESPN <laughs> Ocho. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. No, but there, there's a paid ESPN. ESPN. Well, is no, it you three? Have, ESPN yeah, three? Yeah, Where do they have MMA? That's the ESPN app. That's oh, ESPN that, Plus. Oh, ESPN Plus. ESPN three is their online channel only. Okay. All right. All right. There's some so, subscription so stuff ESPN on there. ESPN Plus but. is the paid version where you pay to see the MMA and the stuff like that. ESPN Plus is basically, they call it their app. Okay. You know, you have the ESPN app, but now you have the ESPN Plus app. That's their UFC channel. That's uh, they, they have a lot of UFC fights on that. Well, one. they have a huge deal with UFC. Yeah, well, you know, you know. I think they gave uh, Dana White half a billion dollars. Okay, for the rights to all this stuff. So Dan, you know, anytime you turn on ESPN Plus, chances are you're going to see a UFC fight. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, now all this stuff with uh, esports starting to become 
more mainstream. I like seeing this. It's a new avenue. At some point, you're gonna we're gonna start talking esports and betting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we're, we're, I'm sure casinos and sports books are going to get involved in this. I well, mean, remember last week we we meant we had a story on the tracking of the players, yeah. biometric tracking. Yeah. So I think you're going to start seeing the melding of sports betting, esports, all that stuff. And you know, at some point it's going to happen. And whether esports people want it or not, it's going to happen. Exit three. We have an upcoming season of the NFL training camp, and, of course, every training camp brings hard knocks. Yep. This year, it's going to be the Oakland Raiders. I wonder if that was a good move. I, I It's their last year in Oakland. W- would you rather see the last year in Oakland or the first year in Vegas? Well, you're know. not seeing anything. You're not seeing Oakland. You're not seeing I Vegas. Know, I you're know, seeing, but... you're, you're, Hang on. You're seeing the Napa Valley. Okay. That's where they have their training camp. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's their training camp. I know, but I, you know what I'm talking about. You know, a, a new kind of, you know, you want to see the Oakland Raiders or you want to see the Vegas Raiders. I, I'm, I'm torn which one I want to see. It's yeah. going to be hard not to say. I, I When they moved to L.A., I kept calling them Oakland. When I finally realized I should say Los Angeles Raiders, they went back to Oakland. So now, yeah. now we had, I wonder how many times. I bet you there's going to be sports books taking action on how many times announcers call the Raiders the Oakland Raiders. Well, I'm just impressed that this is actually one television show that probably has the quickest turnaround time in terms of editing. Oh, sure. I mean, you've got 30, uh, 30-person 30 NFL films crews going to Napa Valley, filming everything, pretty much everything going on, 1,700 hours worth of film, they're saying. That's what they're going to shoot. <laughs> and then edit it into only five episodes this year. What was it like the other time? I, I mean, I remember when they it did, seemed to be a longer when they did the Jets. That was an eight season, eight eight episode season. Okay, all right. They're doing five, and I think last year with the Browns was five, and the year before that was five. They've shortened it immensely because I think at some point it does get intrusive to the teams. I guess. And, and, and let, also, let me tell you something. Nothing's going to top the Jets. <laughs> hard knocks. No. <laughs> Just because, of, you know, he had a great coach, uh, interesting team. It's just it, – it's just... I, I, I wouldn't go so far as a great coach. Well, yeah. He was a fun-to-watch coach. Yeah. He, yeah. Ma- he made the show more interesting the way he acted. I mean – I'm a Jets fan, look, and I can't look, call Rex Ryan a great coach. Well, I, I, and her, for entertainment values, I think he was a great coach. Yeah. I mean, that that was just absolutely fun to watch. What was his phrase? Let's go get a bleeping snack. <laughs> no, no, let's, no, let's go get a snack. So, but, again, I don't know. I, I, I honestly think if they can figure some way to, to work in some of the Vegas stuff into them leaving Oakland as part of this season, you know, I think that might be an interesting undercurrent storyline. I don't there. know how they're going to do it, but you know, it'll be interesting to see uh, Gruden and Mayock interact on sure, TV. Sure. Uh, Mayock should be used to being on TV. He was on ESPN all those years doing analysis and all that stuff. Well, so was Gruden. Yeah, so. yeah, but, but Gruden was doing his football, his quarterback camp or whatever, and he kind of hammed it up for the cameras. Let's see if he does it again with this stuff. And also, they're welcoming back Lee F. Schreiber as the uh, narrator. This will be his thirteenth season. Yep. No, he's good. He's yeah. really good. And I, I it wouldn't be hard knocks without him because it's that signature sound <laughs> that he has for HBO. He does a lot of documentaries and voiceovers. He's, he's, he's got really a, he's, good. Yeah, he's got a great voice for that stuff. Um, I found this out: seven of the last nine teams that have been featured on Hard Knocks have equaled or improved their record from the previous season. Well, you know, I, I mean, is that is that one of those anti curses kind of thing? You go on hard knocks, your record's going to improve, or you're not going to get any worse. They're probably chosen by hard knocks because you know they have good players. I mean, I mean, are they chosen you... anymore? Because I remember they had some issues back well, when they a couple um, years back, you know, when the first time they did the Browns. Well, you know, you know, they had to have somebody apply to to want to do it. Because a lot of teams turned them down. I think the Texans turned them down or something, or one other team turned them down. The first, yeah. It was like the first time that's ever happened. Yeah, but, you know, but like I said, I mean, I'm sure HBO loves the fact that Antonio Brown's there. He, he made a oh, big yeah. splash in the offseason about getting to Oakland. And, you know, 
I'm sure he's going to be featured prominently. So uh, I, I think, you know. I wonder what the over-under. When, when, and... when they see athletes like that, I'm sure Hard Knocks wants to gravitate toward them and tell their story, and they're usually really good players, so probably they do better in, during the season. And what's the over-under in episode number is before he has a meltdown? Oh, on I screen. don't know. I don't know. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be fun, I, regardless of whether they're Vegas or Oakland yeah. or Los Angeles or wherever they want to play, <laughs> Napa Valley. You know, it's going to be a fun. It's going to be a fun team to watch on Hard Knocks. Exit four. I always reserve this exit for silly promotions or unusual promotions that you know are kind of different. They hang out there. I think this one probably is one of the most unique ones out there. Miller Lite has unveiled the Can Controller. Okay, I don't know what that is. It's an esports gaming controller. That doubles as a 12-ounce can of beer. And, yes, it, there is beer in the can. It's a real it's a real can of beer that you can control yeah. your game with? Yes. It's a, it's a 10-button controller. What uh, the hell? Accord, according to what I was reading. How do you reading, even use that? According to what I was reading, this is 10-button controllers are not as sophisticated as the, the, the controllers they use in the real eSports. So okay. there's more buttons. <laughs> so this There's is, more buttons in eSports than there are in this can. This is a novelty. Yeah, I would guess it would be, but I mean, it actually has beer in it that you can actually it. drink beer from it while playing. Is this whenever what? you want to? Uh, this is bizarre. I mean, beer is not just for esports. I guess not. <laughs> but uh, it but they're not selling it. This okay, is, they're not selling this it. This is okay. a giveaway. Oh, it's a giveaway. Okay. I mean, when they say novelty, that this is a this is actually well. How a how is it? I guess you have to purchase Miller Lite and send away for something. Is it like a drawing or what? Well, what, is what they it they did here? was they had a tournament at E three, all right, the Electronic Entertainment Expo. You know, like how Ice is the brand, uh, the the gaming uh, expo, the casino gaming expo for all the different things and games coming out for that sure. industry. Sure. E three is almost like the electronic games industry stuff. Okay. So they had a uh, E3 tournament where people were going to be playing against comedian and gaming fan Eric Andre. Okay. Uh, I'm not familiar with the guy, mm -hmm. quite honestly. But they had to play him in Street Fighter. All right. And if they beat him, they won one of these controllers. Let, let me ask you something. Just speaking as a uh, lawyer. Oh wait, wait. You know, are, are, are uh, fans, these... fan, uh, players twenty one and older. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Some of these esports are, are kids. I knew I, where I, you were going with that one. Yeah, I, know, I just wanted to see. Uh, did they card them before they uh, let them play? Uh, no, but uh, no. That that was my question. I mean, th this is this is a sport dominated by younger people. So I'm I'm just curious and about the according to Miller Lite. Okay. Forty percent of all gamers are beer drinkers. Really? Okay. And no, they're I'm... already drinking beer while they're playing. Okay. Well, I guess we're talking about the twenty-one and over crowd. I would hope Again. so. I hope so. Well, for purposes of this show, we have to assume they're yeah. twenty-one. I mean, God forbid we're not going to encourage underage drinking, no, but no. You, it, it must go on. Yeah. But I. Uh, Miller Lite has been one of the four forerunners in all this stuff. They got into esports last year. Or earlier this year, I should say, January, February, they did a huge sponsorship deal across the board with a couple things, and they just continue to to actually cultivate a following in the esports realm by doing stuff like this, and it makes sense. Hmm. Well, that'll about do it for today's trip down the turnpike, and that was brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store, available in over ninety five cities across North America. Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly dot com and order today, and now get five dollars off your first order of twenty dollars or more when using our promo code Drink nineteen at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. And as always, to get in touch with Turnpike Sports, you can call or text us at 609-512-5910, 609-512-5910. Hit us up on twi Twitter, or Twitter or Facebook. I almost said Twacebook. Twitter, <laughs> Twitter or Twacebook. Uh, at Turnpike Sports is the handle for, for both of those sites. Uh, info at Turnpike Sports Radio is our email address. Uh, don't forget to get your International Bikini Team calendar. Info at internationalbikiniteam.org is the email address for your ordering information. You can catch the show 
on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV. Uh, go over to TurnpikeSportsRadio.com, and you can click on the link to our channel there, and you can catch it on your smart TV anytime you want. Uh, the show is also distributed through iHeartMedia. You can subscribe to us at iTunes. Stitcher Radio also carries the show, and we have a YouTube channel. Yeah, and stick around after this. Uh, we just got back from Atlantic City, the East Coast Gaming Congress. We're going to talk all about that. And we also checked out uh, two new sports books in Atlantic City. One's open and one is soon to open. Uh, and you'll hear all about it. So stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. <laughs> Hey, this is Dave Weishadol from Turnpike Sports with this week's Bet Flash. It's been one year since the U.S. Supreme Court struck down the federal ban on sports betting and more than $9 billion has been legally bet in the U.S. since last June. New Jersey's racetracks and casinos have taken in $2.94 billion worth of sports wagers, while Nevada remains the nation's biggest sports betting market with a handle of $5.2 billion since May of last year. The LPGA is looking into new technology to help better track players' shots. According to LPGA Commissioner Mike Wan, the revenue from sports betting will allow the league the freedom to invest in a better system than they currently have. And finally, police in Gwinnett County, Georgia, busted a video rental shop as a front for an illegal sports book. The shop, which had mostly VHS tapes on its shelves, didn't have a movie dated later than 2007. I guess the main fact that tipped police off is that it's 2019 and there was a videotape store still open in their county. From the seaside to the desert, from the betting lines to the sites online, Turnpike Sports has got you covered. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at Turnpike Sports. New Jersey's sports betting market has exploded, and there's so many places to bet it can make your head spin. But PointsBet.com is the one online sports book you can't afford to ignore. PointsBet.com has everything a person would want in a sports book. Spread betting, money line betting, prop bets, you name it, you'll find it at PointsBet. Daily promos that can't be beat, odds boosters you won't find anywhere else, early payout promos, it's all at pointsbet.com. You can bet from anywhere in New Jersey using your mobile device. And now there's even a better reason to sign up with pointsbet.com. Go to pointsbet.com and sign up using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you'll get two risk-free bets up to a 1000 bucks. PointsBet is the preferred sportsbook of superstars Allen Iverson and Darrell Rivas. They even have the Rivas Betting Academy hosted by Darrell Rivas himself. So sign up today at PointsBet.com using our promo code PIKE and start having some real fun. That's promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. PointsBet, stay sharp. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Psst. Yeah, you. Come here. Haven't you heard? We don't need to hide anymore. Now, we can shop privately for adult products at adamandeve.com. They've got massage oils, lingerie, and lots more we can't mention here. Use offer code SPICE404. They'll give you 50% off almost any one item, three free DVDs, free mystery gift, and free shipping. That's 50% off, free shipping, and more. Private shopping starts at adamandeve.com. When it comes to online sports betting, PlaySugarHouse.com offers players one of the best experiences in the state of New Jersey. They offer live in-game betting on sporting events worldwide, money line bets, point spreads, prop bets, play-by-play bets, and many more. All at PlaySugarHouse.com, your new home for sports betting in New Jersey. Take advantage of one of their 12 easy deposit methods to get in on all the action. And now, when you sign up at PlaySugarHouse.com using our promo code PIKE, they'll match your first deposit up to $250. More bets, better odds at PlaySugarHouse.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. I'll bet you 20 bucks I can get you gambling before the end of the day. No way. I'll give you three to one odds. No. Nope. Five to one. No. Nope. Ten to one. You're on. Welcome back to Turnpike Sports. I want to remind everyone that this portion of Turnpike Sports is brought to you by PointsBet.com. PointsBet has one of the best sign-up offers in New Jersey. Go to PointsBet.com and sign up using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you'll get two risk-free bets up to 1000 bucks. So sign up today at PointsBet.com using our promo code PIKE and start having some real fun. That's promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. 
points bet. Stay sharp. And Must oh, no way. I got to do the legal stuff. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. I was going to mention that they are also the home of the Revis uh, Betting Academy. Oh, too. yeah. I got to tell you, uh, I did a great prop bet uh, on pointsbet.com for the uh, NBA Finals. I had uh, Kyle Lowry to get 18-plus points. I think it was like plus three hundred or something like that, and I uh, put, a little, put a little money on it, and I boy, he came out smoking. And guess what? I I won that bet right before halftime, so uh, that was awesome. Thank he, you, Points Bet, for being a great, great online. Uh, he actually better. he actually came out. He scored the first eleven points for <laughs> the entire <laughs> team. That's what I mean. I I placed that bet, and five minutes later, the game starts, and he's uh, on fire. I, I've never never seen him play like that before. I, he, he obviously has the potential to do it all the time, but he had to have been locked in that night. He got into foul trouble towards the middle of the game and had to sit for a while. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? Right after I, uh, <laughs> right after I won my bet, he can get in all the foul trouble he wants. Yep. Well, we were there in Atlantic City, yep. East Coast Gaming Congress, the 23rd East Coast Gaming Congress. Uh, Always a great time. For Always the, the, for, the best for, people in the business. For those who don't know, it's a, a gaming industry conference where we discuss all the different uh, 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 industry angles in terms of sports betting, now sports betting, uh, fantasy sports, esports, all the casino industry slots, uh, business uh, trends, uh, all that stuff. And also there's networking parties, all that stuff, like a normal conference. And uh, we just happened to uh, be at this conference the nights of both the final games of the NBA Finals and the NHL Finals. So when we got done with the conference and the networking parties and all that stuff, we found our way over to the sports books. Yeah, yeah, no, they were and, uh, uh, lots of fun. Just recently, Harris Atlantic City opened up what they're calling the book at Harris Resort Atlantic yes, City. Yes. And the book is the Harris brand mm -hmm. that they're going to be launching because there's going to be another one coming soon. And that's going to be at Bally's Wild West. Which we checked out, too. And if you're watching this on TV, you'll, you're seeing some of the footage that we yeah, took you, of you, both you, books as yeah, we're you talking made a about video them. Of, yeah, you actually made a video of both For both of them, of them. yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. and, and let's talk about the first one, the Harris, uh, the book at Harris Resort, as they're calling it. Which is it's right, the smaller of the two. As we're speaking right now, that's the only one open yeah. right now. It's the smaller of the two. Yep. Comfortable chairs. I, tell you, <laughs> I have to admit, they every, were comfortable. Every sports book I have been in, has great chairs. I mean, I, I'm like thinking, where do they get this stuff? I want to bring it home. I mean, this, this these chairs are amazing. And I have to admit, in the space they had for it, which I would say maybe it's a little smaller than Golden Nuggets, mm -hmm. they use it extremely well. Yeah. I mean, very nice display set up, very spacious chairs. Yeah. I, I like the fact that they had... Uh, the uh, girls coming around taking orders and everything else. I did, you know, they have a they have a menu which uh, by the way, I I tweeted out. Is that the proper way to say that? You use I, social media I, to I, uh, show it to people. I, I I put the menu on my Twitter account. I guess that's the good yeah. way to say it. No, but um a pretty good menu. They have uh I guess it's provided by the AC Burger Company. Yeah, which is like right next door. Great burger. So. Well, actually, it's two doors down. Two doors down because yeah. you had in the way Harris was set up. You had the sports book, then you had that the Eden Lounge. Okay, yeah, and then you had the AC Burger Company. All right, and unfortunately, the two girls that were doing all the orders had to go from the sports book, run down to them, get the orders, and bring them back. They did a great job, though. Yeah, for you know, for what they were doing. I mean, there was no. Inter intermediary to actually put in the information mm -hmm. and then go and get the food when it's ready. They had actually had to type up the order, run it down, get it from the thing, and bring it back. So there, there was a delay. Well, I'm sure there's a it's a work in progress. They just opened, so and, and I have to admit, the first beer we got there, we were sitting there. That was weird. Yeah, they came in plastic cups with lids on them. I understand not <laughs> wanting to spill it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't understand giving me a straw. What? And I used it. Yeah, beer I used a, a straw. Beer through a straw. Okay, there you go. Beer it was it was it was uh, kind of weird at the first, but you know what? I sitting there relaxing in that chair. I was actually lounging, so <laughs> I really didn't want to spill it. So I actually just continued with it because nothing was coming out of the sides of it. I, I tilted it a little bit more, and it was it was good. So thank you for the. 
beer through a straw night. I have to tell you, that sports book has a special place in my heart because the first bet I placed there, I won. And uh, I'm sorry, Boston fans, but I placed a bet on the St. Louis Blues money line for the uh, game that they eventually won, and I eventually won. And, you know, congratulations to St. Louis. So yeah, no, that, we, we, uh, we were there for both nights. So it was a great night watching uh, St. Louis win and cashing tickets. Yep. There you go. And, again, great job. Great job, Caesars, Harris, all that. The the book is nice. Yep, yep. What's going to be spectacular when this guy launches is the one in Bally's Wild West. Now, what is that called? That's the book at Harris, uh, Wild, uh, Bally's Wild West. Okay, they're both called The Book. The Book is the brand. The Book is the brand. Of okay, the book. So it's going to be The Book at Bally's Wild West. Or Bally's Lang City okay, or Bally's right. Resort, what, okay. whatever the full, uh, formal name By the of way, it is. it's enormous. Now, is that the biggest one in Atlantic City? It's going to be 500 be square feet bigger than Ocean Resort, which will make it the biggest. Okay. Supposedly, Borgata is going to rival it when they open. Well, right now, if that opens, that will be the biggest in New Jersey, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the biggest. I mean, it's enormous. Yeah. Enormous. No, I, well, you know what? I, I don't know how big FanDuel is up in Meadowlands. Yeah, I, I that's not as big as that. No? Not, not as well, big as that. If If people are familiar with the Wild West Casino, you go in and you have the big stage on the one side. You have the uh, circular bar near the front of it. They're doing something off to the left now with uh, some uh, some gaming tables built. I look like blackjack or something. They're going to do some kind of high high end over there, high roller stuff or whatever it's going to be. But the other half of the bo- the the uh, the floor from the mountain bar. Yeah. And if you know where the mountain bar is, it ends basically in the middle of the floor. The other half of that building basically is going to be a sports book yeah i mean it, and it, now correct me if i'm wrong but is that the one that going to have the self-service beer wall yes yes they have they're going to have a self-service well beer wait, wall. wait wait wait. i can't Will say have, that i can't say that because you're they're still having the dge review uh, okay. all this I'm assuming if, if it's all things be, go well, they're going to have a crossed. self-service beer wall with what sixteen taps, something like that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So it, it's it's not it's not come up and just get it. Okay. You, you actually have to buy it first from from the uh, from the uh, vendor or whatever it is. You know, and then I, you can I, go and get I, it. I, I mentioned the uh, the Harris book has a special place in my heart because the first bet I placed there, I won. Uh, Bally's Wild West has a special place in my heart because I saw the my beloved Philadelphia Eagles win their first Super Bowl standing there in yep. Wild West. So well, uh, I can't wait to go back and uh, actually watch some football there. Well, you know, I just realized this year, yep, Caesars has been the property of choice for us to watch all these championships. Yeah, no, I know. We were we down in Super Bowl. City. For a Super Bowl at Bally's Wild West. Bally's Wild West. Before there and, was, and also we were at also, where else were we at? We were also at Harris for both the finals for the NBA and the NHL. Yes, yes, and that's three of them. Yeah, right there. Well, hey, the World Series. Where Th- were we? Yeah, thank you, Caesars. Yeah. <laughs> so now the uh, Caesars is great though. Caesars always they, does great things. They. they their properties are always the top. They're always the best. And, you know, you always have a great time at Caesars. Yeah. And, you know, we were there, and I'm going to shift gears to the more serious topic. Yes. 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 East Coast Gaming Congress. Absolutely. 23rd uh, annual Congress there. And I realized they did it, they usually have it a little earlier, and they did it on the anniversary of sports betting. Oh, Okay. Or give or take the anniversary yeah, around, of sports betting, yeah, yeah. It's as close as they could get to it. I gotta tell you, they, they always have the best speakers. It's like the, the 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 people who are at the forefront of the gaming industry. Ted Leonsis was there. Yeah, they gave, I, they gave the keynote. Absolutely, what an impressive guy. Yeah, I mean, he is not. He, I didn't know he was number one. I didn't know he has an Emmy for a documentary filmmaker, and also I didn't know he was a mayor. Of a small Florida town at one time, but, yeah, uh, and now, now he's he's half owner of the Arena Football League. Yes, yes, not a team, which, the league. Yes, the league. Which, by the way, the league has now a Atlantic City team called the Atlantic City. So Black he was Jets. very happy to be there. So yeah, <laughs> obviously, yeah. Uh, he also is owner of the Capitals, the Wizards, and I'm not sure about the Nationals. I don't think so. No, well, but what, he owns those two because he's got the arena. The monumental, Mo- monumental sports and entertainment. Yep. Okay. But uh, he also owns the arena, okay. where he's pushing in D.C. 
to get sports betting into. Which is great. Yeah. This is great. And, you know, I, I realized that as he said it, he was uh, pushing the uh, official data rights uh, argument. And I realized why he was doing it. Not only does he have the arena football, he's got the uh, hockey team, he's got the basketball team. Mm -hmm. So he's a big proponent of the official data. Sure. And quite honestly, maybe maybe it's the way he presents it himself. It didn't seem like such an egregious argument to make. I know it's going to piss off a lot of people to well, say it that you know, way. What, but the way he proposed and talked about it, you know, maybe that's the way his he is. Yeah. And it yeah. probably is. Well, that's probably why he's successful. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, And then you had uh, uh, the American Gaming Association chairman, uh, uh, Miller. Yep. Bill Miller, uh, talking about it, uh, talking about everything, talking about the anniversary of the gaming and all that stuff and where he sees certain things going. Very interesting. I have to admit, the best panel that we saw there was the ending panel. Oh, uh, yeah. with the, uh, they had the, all the, the leadership C think tank. The CEOs of the different Pen casinos. They had Penn National. They had David Cordish of the Cordish companies Absolutely. there. Uh, you had Michael Michael Pol Pollock from mm -hmm. the Spectrum Gaming Group. He mm -hmm. was one of the moderators. You had uh, Mohican Sun was there. Uh, you also had uh, Rust Street Gaming yep. Yep. talking about that stuff. Surprisingly, I was surprised he said they're eyeing Massachusetts. Well, you know, there, I I think what he said was there's one license left in Massachusetts. They're eyeing and, it, yeah. Well, I, I'm sure other people are eyeing it, too. But uh, I'm, he's, I'm, I'm glad he said it. So yeah. I mean, he, he had enough guts to say it and, can you know, put it out in the open like that, So which was good. Yeah, and, you know, every one of them were great. Lloyd Levinson, him and his, him and his firm run it. They're one of the main... Uh, Groups that run it with uh, uh, Friedman LLP, the uh, accountant firm, and also Spectrum Gaming. They always put on a really great event. Uh, last year or two years ago, they started doing something with the uh, food and beverage stuff, and that was kind of interesting. I, you know, I wasn't able to attend that one, but their food and beverage stuff is really, really great. If you're not into the gaming section of it, you know, you might want to take a look at some of that stuff where that Cisco sponsored. Yeah, the yeah. food company. So no, no it, 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 always an amazing event. I mean, that's one event you have to go to if you're interested in gaming because you, you just you just learn so much from the people who are, you know, making the rules and making the you know the ma monumental steps forward in gaming and sports betting and esports. It's it's just an amazing event. And also one other thing I noticed about the esports gaming congress of the attendees. They all know each other to a certain extent. They're all friendly with each other. There's sure. no, there's no, you know, angry competition between. No, these I, I think there's a feeling of camaraderie and you especially know, the Atlantic it, City people. Yeah, I, I, th I think it's such a, it's such a great industry to be involved with. Yeah, because yeah. there's great people who are involved with the industry, so it, it makes it a, a great time and a, just a great industry to get involved with. Yep, and we'll probably be there again next year uh, as one of the media partners for Turnpike, as well as our other. Uh, radio show house of cards yep. so uh lloyd again thank you for having us it was great it was great seeing you and uh it's great seeing everybody at the conference uh great week and i just want to remind everyone that this portion of turnpike sports was brought to you by pointsbet.com pointsbet has one of the best sign up offers in new jersey go to pointsbet.com and sign up using our promo code pike that's p-i-k-e and you'll get two risk-free bets up to a thousand bucks so sign up today at pointsbet.com using our promo code PIKE and start having some real fun. That's promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. PointsBet, stay sharp. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. I think that's a wrap for uh, this week's Turnpike Sports. Great time in Atlantic City. Great to see. Uh, congratulations to uh, Toronto and St. Louis for winning their respective championships. Always great to see first-timers. That'll do it for us. See you next time on the Turnpike.